morning. I would like to thank Madame uh, for this invitation to this sixth national remittance stakeholder uh, network meeting. Um, I believe this will be our first uh, stakeholder network meeting we are attending as, as the State Department and we are really glad to be considered partners and stakeholders. Um, and you started by thanking me and thanking the government of Kenya for being um, supportive. And I want to thank you back for being supportive. And really, let me take a minute to reiterate our commitment um, to this work. As you have well stated, remittances are extremely important for particularly for countries situated such as ours. Um, and as we have seen, remittances for Kenya have continued to grow in significance and importance, and we can expect um, that relationship to grow. So let me uh, start by saying, um, country director, that I really would wish to deepen our engagement on this issue um, from the Ministry of Foreign and Diaspora Affairs um, and IFAD and other actors to deepen this engagement so that we can see how to make um, every dollar go even further, how to support both um, the remitters and the recipients of remittances. And I want to thank also uh, the whole team that has kept, you know, Diaspora Affairs engaged and informed about the projects that you have been doing. I think it is in June um, this year. Yes, it is in June when we were invited to the uh, Global Forum on Remittances, Investments and Development, uh, at the meeting that you just spoke about here in Nairobi that was hugely, hugely successful. Um, and I believe in September, um, uh, the State Department was nominated, nominated a focal point to strengthen cooperation with IFAD and its program activities. Um, of course, I don't need to say much about IFAD and the work that you do when uh, being internationally recognized, widely recognized as, a, as an important reference point, a convener uh, around these conversations uh, on remittances and diaspora investment portfolios um, with the projects that aim to promote greater financial inclusion. Um, and reduce the cost of remittance. And this is something that we are committed to as well, a big part of our job and our mandate. One, one, one piece of our mandate is to create an incentive framework for remittances. So really convening this meeting here for us to have this conversation is really in um, right up our alley. We are trying to figure out as much as everybody else, how can we create an incentive framework for remittances? How can we make it easier, faster, cheaper, more effective for diasporas around the world to be able to send money home? Um, and, and as you know, uh, the State Department for Diaspora Affairs is a new State Department, uh, new-ish, uh, a year old uh, next week, I believe, um, under the executive order of 1 of 2022, read together with one and two of 2023, um, which elevated the State Department for Diaspora Affairs to a State Department coming from uh, what was a smaller uh, unit called the Diaspora and Consular Affairs Directorate within the then Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, and with that elevation comes a much broader mandate. It started out as a six-point mandate. Um, and in the last three weeks, in the last uh, uh, executive order, uh, the mandate has uh, broadened to a nine-point mandate. Um, the work on remittances remains critical. The work on mainstreaming the diaspora in the process of national development remains critical. We now have expanded mandates as far as diaspora jobs and finding opportunities for our diaspora concerned, as well as deepened mandates as far as democratic uh, representation uh, and involvement of the diaspora is concerned. Also pleased to inform that, that part of that um, broadening of the mandate comes with uh, the expansion or the creation of our first ever uh, semi-autonomous government agency or SAGA uh, named the Diaspora Placement Agency. I think critical to this conversation uh, on developing an incentive framework for remittances and savings um, is to note, and these figures have been said before, that last year uh, Kenya's diaspora remitted $4.1 billion. 
Um, and of course, that remittance accounts to accounts for three percent of our GDP and has overtaken, uh, and you've probably heard me say this before, but has overtaken our traditional sources of forex, such as tea, coffee, tourism, um, even for a need. In my mind, the diaspora then becomes an important actor, or the diaspora is a decolonizing force. When it is possible for people in an uncoordinated fashion to send small ticket sizes of $5, $2, $3, $20, $100 home, and that figure amalgamates to something bigger than what you sell your tea or coffee or horticulture for, um, then that diaspora has become a decolonizing force. In other words, they are able to do much, much more, um, one, than we have been able to make them or to ask them to do, but two, without any real uh, bureaucracy or interventions, they have done this great thing that we sit here today to both study, to try and understand and to see how we can make, uh, we can make better. We, of course, continue to work with the relevant stakeholders to try and see how we can make that process a little more slick. How can we lower the cost of remittances? Um, one of the things that has continued to be a sticking issue um, for us is that remittances, and you spoke about uh, remittances being targeted largely to rural, um, rural families, is that from, our, from World Bank statistics and from our own analysis, the $4 billion of last year that I mentioned, which we have seen a 14% increase in this year, and we expect to, to close at a, uh, if I might wear my capitalist hat for a minute, close at a strong position. Um, that, that figure, according to the World Bank, is only 5% of the diaspora's disposable income. In other words, it is the little money that you send to help somebody bury a relative or the little 5,000 shillings you send home because there is a, uh, an M Changa account for us to be able to pay somebody's um, hospital bill and so on. Our move as a State Department is to see how we can change the mix of our remittance increasingly to move from largely a uh, remittance for social purposes and for basic needs and to see how the diaspora can continue to now remit for purposes of investment and for sustainable growth. The mix right now is about 80-20 in favor of social remittances or in favor of remitting for purposes of family needs. The president's dream, the president's directive has been that we need to grow that remittance from the around 400 billion, 400 billion shillings, 500 billion shillings, depending on um, uh, which day you measure it, to 1 trillion shillings uh, in the next five years. But much of that difference of the 500 billion must come from investments. And that ties in with our second mandate, that is to harness diaspora investments, savings, and um, technology transfer than for purposes of remittance. So this leveraging on technology transfer, for example, will allow us to bridge a digital divide and will allow us to really take this to the next level. Of course, a number of things have to be done by private actors um, to improve their, um, their processes. Banks, financial institutions, and so on, for example, will have to work differently to respond to the needs of the diaspora. A quick example for you is that a number of our banks still uh, want diaspora who are taking up diaspora bank accounts to fill in a physical form, scan it, send it home. It's never going to work. We will not move the needle if we continue to do things like this. But other banks have moved to the point where you can open your bank account uh, purely online and you know they have these um, facial recognition features where you sort of hold up your phone and they, you move your head various times until they are sure that this is a live picture and so on. Banks, financial institutions, um, private actors, government have to think differently to be able to address the needs of the diaspora. 
and to keep changing, to keep adapting. So as the State Department for Diaspora Affairs, we intend to strengthen uh, our collection of remittance data uh, so that they can, it can con continue to inform our policy interventions um, as we also strive to provide a stable legal and regulatory framework uh, that will promote faster, cheaper, safer transfer of remittances to achieve higher levels of financial inclusion. We're in the, we're in the process of undertaking a baseline survey on remittances, which we hope will benefit uh, from such stakeholder networking sessions. We are looking to understand everything that we can about this, um, this remittance so that we can see how to, um, to support, that, support that better. I note that IFAD is implementing a regional program uh, known as the Platform for Remittances, Investments, and Migrants Entrepreneurship in Africa Prime. Prime Africa, that will promote development opportunities created by remittance flows, uh, by lowering costs and improving financial inclusion through digitalization. I believe this will greatly benefit, um, greatly affect the mass of the unseen and underbanked and informal uh, receivers of remittances, as we said, largely based in rural Kenya. I'm encouraged that Kenya is a target country in this program, and we look forward to benefiting from that dialogue um, and the SDD, uh, State Department for Diaspora Affairs by extension, will take great, will greatly take advantage of the lessons and the experiences that we come to from this, uh, from this program. I, I hope in today's conversation as we go through, um, this network is going to help us unpack uh, for the State Department what does an incentive framework for remittances mean? What does that look like? What do we need to create? We're here to learn uh, together, to partner. And for us to see then, once we understand what it is that needs to get done, how we can actually um, get to doing it. I want to thank you once again for this invitation to this critical stakeholder networking session and look forward to its informative conclusions and lessons. And once again, Madame, let me um, invite you or ask um, and offer deeper engagement between the State Department um, and the network and look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you very much. We have um, a diaspora investment conference here in Nairobi uh, at the KICC on December 13th to 15th. Uh, if you're in this room and you haven't yet received your invitation, this is your invitation. Please do come. Um, you can register online at, uh, I believe it's kenyadiasporaconference.co.ke. Um, but I, I will, as I leave, I will leave behind uh, Boniface Munzala, who can give you any information around that conference. Um, and we hope that as many of you who work in the remittance space are, as possible, are able to take up um, exhibition booths so that you can meet with the diaspora when they come home and have conversations around the products that you offer and the interventions that you're working in. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you.